Welcome to the GAF1 Power Rankings, looking at the driver power rankings after every week's Grand Prix. Ten drivers will make these power ranking lists. They're not standings. They're just an effort to look at who's trending based on the most recent Grand Prix. Come with me as I run through this week's power rankings. Welcome back to my channel, Greg Allen F1. If you're new to my channel, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I put out new Formula One videos about two to three times a week. This week, I want to talk about my power rankings following the amazing Italian Grand Prix, which was just about a week ago. We're a few hours away from FP1 in Italy for a second straight week. Brand new track, huge news with Checo leaving what will be Aston Martin Racing and Sebastian Vettel moving in. Formula One has been extremely exciting over the last week, so let's get started. If you watched my video last week on power rankings, you know that I have my cut line, drivers who just missed out, and this week it has changed. Alex Albon has dropped out of the power rankings after his 15th place, and this is a reflection of continued struggles that Albon is having in that number two seat in Red Bull, uh, and it's also a reflection of the really good runs that Alpha Turi is happening, are having, and Albon's being outrun by his junior team uh, several times here. So Alex Albon, for me, did not have a good week last week. Needs to definitely rebound over the next three days and this weekend coming up. But as a result, he drops out of my top 10 in my power rankings. Charles Leclerc and Ferrari, <laughs> they're having their celebration this week, but not a lot to be celebrating in the Ferrari camp recently. A hard crash for him last week after a brake failure. Um... Terrible, terrible week all in all for Ferrari. They're definitely hoping that it's going to be a better weekend this weekend. But their thousandth anniversary has already been overshadowed, um, maybe on purpose, by Sebastian Vettel announcing his future plans. And they're facing the reality that going to a team like Racing Point or what will be Aston Martin Racing is considered a better seat than Ferrari right now. Imagine saying that to someone a year ago. Let's get into my top 10, though. And we'll start off with number 10. Coming in at number 10 on my list is Sergio Perez. Checo, unfortunately, is going to be looking for a seat next year, but that shouldn't overshadow uh, his pretty solid season he's having this year. Ups and downs. The, the COVID positive test cost him two races. Uh, so that plays a little bit in the uh, reason of why he's only 11th in the driver standings right now. Uh, however, he has put up a solid 34 points so far. No podiums yet. I'd like to see him get closer to that. Uh, now his teammate has one. And now he's racing for his resume and a job next year. So it'll be interesting to see. But for me, Checo had a pretty solid week last week. Uh, he's been pretty consistent and good all season long. His pace has looked solid. So he makes number 10. Let's look at number 9. Coming in at number 9, Esteban Akan. Uh, I think this is a driver that's slowly on the rise. Maybe not as... as Shot to the top rise, like you've seen some from other drivers here. But Esteban Ocon has been consistently getting better every week, as has Renault as a team in general. Real solid run again uh, at the Italian Grand Prix. He's been finishing the points more frequently. He's been more consistent since returning to Formula 1 this year in that ride. Uh, currently, he's sitting on 30 points. No wins or podiums, obviously. But pretty solid season going. He sits 12th in the driver standings, um, but I think that's more a reflection of a, a little bit slower start that he had for Renault. Uh, I've seen a lot of improvement for him over the season so far. He seems to keep consistently, slowly moving that needle to getting better and better each week. So for me, ninth place, good place for Esteban Akon. Let's look at number eight. Coming in in eighth place, jumping into my top 10 this week. If you watched last week, he had just missed out. Carlos Sainz Jr., Huge week last week at the Italian Grand Prix. Almost won that race. Had a fantastic race all day long. Drove that McLaren uh, right up to the last lap. If there's one more lap, we're probably talking about Carlos Sainz Jr. getting his first win. Had a really solid week, as did McLaren in general. Uh, Carlos Sainz is sitting on 41 points this year. One podium, uh, obviously, last week. And he's ninth overall in the driver's standings right now. And I think that this is going to keep getting better and better. And, of course, for Carlos Sainz, when you see what's going on with Ferrari and you see how good McLaren's doing, may not be the happiest driver in the world about his future plans. 
but there's still a lot of racing to go this year and he seems to be on the rise as does McLaren so I expect some good things from him before the end of this season number seven coming in at number seven is Lando Norris uh, if you watch my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of Lando Norris. I think he's doing amazing things this season in that McLaren seat. He's been extremely exciting to watch. He's been consistently finishing the points every single week and, and treading around that, that fifth place uh, running order, P5, after almost every single Grand Prix. Another great week last week. Gets outshined a little bit by Carlos Sainz, but he was right there and could have easily podium too if things had maybe worked out slightly different in the pitch strategy. 57 points this season, one podium, and he is fifth right now in the driver standings. An awesome season so far for Lando Norris, and one that I think is going to keep getting better. I have some money on Lando Norris getting another podium at least this year, um, maybe two or three. So good spot for him to be in seventh. A little outshined by Carlos Sainz last week, but if you're McLaren, that's a great problem to have. All right, coming in in sixth place, dropping a few spots from my standings last week, Valtteri Bottas. Botas needed to make a statement this last week uh, that he's going to challenge for the driver's championship. And it's it's an interesting thing to look at because technically he actually gained on uh, Lewis Hamilton in the driver's standings and actually surpassed Max Verstappen as well. And for a driver to have accomplished both of those things and come out of it with the negative attitude around his run last week says a lot about the current state of Valtteri Botas in that Mercedes right now. Overall, while those two factors might be true, I thought he had a, a poor race and a poor showing. He was never really even in the top three or four in this race. And with Mercedes and that equipment and how fast Lewis Hamilton looked, I, I want to know what's going on there and, and what's happening in Botas' head that he can't seem to translate the speed of that Mercedes into race performance on Sunday. And his first lap of the Italian GP was, was horrific, and it really took him out of contention of ever being a factor in that race. A lot of people talk about the winner. Winning that race because of a penalty to Lewis Hamilton that took Mercedes out, where was Valtteri Bottas? Valtteri Bottas didn't have a penalty. He got out raced by the three drivers who podiumed. There's really no excuse of why Bottas wasn't the right there to pick it up for where Lewis Hamilton left it off. And for me, that's... The other power rankings I've watched have Botas not even in the top 10. I understand why. For me, Valtteri Botas still sits number two in the driver standings, and he technically gained on Hamilton and did pass for Stappen in the driver standings this week. So I can't really have him much further out than sixth. But there's something going on where I he needs to be racing better on Sunday than he has been. And I think that's something Mercedes have to be looking at at this point. Because realistically... I think in a, in a perfect world with Mercedes, and if they were really performing to that level, Lewis Hamilton getting that penalty should have had Valtteri Botas winning that race last week. But he was nowhere to be factored into it. So Botas, sixth place. All right, coming in, and my fifth place on my standings, a driver who does move down from last week, but that's not really fair to him or the situation. This has nothing to do with, with Daniel Ricciardo, who is my fifth place driver, performing poorly last week it has to do with other drivers just performing at such an exceptional level that he got dropped back two spots and I, it's almost unfair because I thought Daniel Ricciardo had a really good race again um he's gonna podium this year I said that a week ago on, on my power rankings Daniel Ricciardo is, is knocking on the door of podium Renault's getting better McLaren's getting better so whether it be this year or next year I think Daniel Ricciardo is going to be challenging for podiums and and race honestly race wins um, sooner than we think. I think he's driving awesome. I think he's he's helping that team raise to a whole nother level than they've been the last couple of years. I've loved watching him there. I'm a McLaren fan, so I, I'm pretty excited for him to be alongside Lando Norris next year. But I'm also kind of sad to not see where he could have taken that team uh, if he was staying. Fifth place, though, he does drop two spots in my power rankings. But again, not because he's running poorly, but because the driver's ahead of him just raised to a, an insane level at the Italian Grand Prix. So let's get into the next one. All right, coming in at number four, moving up in my power rankings, Lance Stroll, and how can he not? He gets a second career podium at the Italian Grand Prix. Looked fantastic all day. He was fast. There were some mishaps. Uh, he, he did miss a chicane at one point in that race. Uh, lost a spot to Carlos Sainz on that, that restart that could have maybe been the difference between him challenging Gasly for a win. Um instead of Carlos Sainz, so some room for improvement, but overall, 
Brilliant job by Lance Stroll, who's having a fantastic season. He has 57 points right now. He's sitting fourth in the driver standings, almost unnoticed by, by everyone. He is sitting fourth right now in the overall driver standings, has a podium, has been close to podium in several other races, and that probably won't be his only podium this year. We know now that his job is safe. Obviously, that probably has something to do with, you know, his relation with Lawrence. But nonetheless, 21 years old, and he is racing at a, a very high level, has improved his qualifying and his practice pace, and looks great in Grand Prix right now. I know a lot of us want to see Perez and Vettel. That would have been an awesome lineup. But if we're being unbiased and a little, you know, not upset about the family ties here, Lance Stroll's earning his spot every single week this year. In 2020, he's been fantastic. And for me, he's fourth in the driver standings. He's fourth in my, my power rankings. And if he keeps this up, he could keep going up this power rankings for me. Awesome job by Lance Stroll so far. Be very interesting to see what happens at Racing Point the remainder of the season now and whether or not there is a discrepancy between these two drivers in performance after the announcement, or if we continue on this pace of both of them looking pretty good every week. Coming in at number three, Pierre Gasly. And if you watch any of my videos, or especially my power rankings last week, I gave a glowing review of how awesome Pierre Gasly has been in 2020. And that was before the Italian Grand Prix, where he got his first career Formula One win, the moment everyone's going to be talking about, probably the moment of the season in 2020. Uh, fantastic moment for, for everybody who was watching. And obviously, such an emotional and fantastic for win for Pierre Gasly, for that team at AlphaTauri, and of course for France in general. First French winner since 1996. And what a great story. It's going to be the probably the story of 2020. If it's not, we're in for a great rest of the season. But yes, Pierre Gasly, I already had him on in my top 10 at 6th last week. He jumps ahead of a bunch of drivers, and how can he not? He is one of just four different winners on the Formula 1 circuit this year. Awesome job last week, and I expect that that's going to continue with that momentum for the remainder of season. Probably much to the dismay of Alex Albon and Red Bull, but nonetheless, Gasly has been amazing for me. I would honestly give him driver of the year right now for what he's done in the equipment he's in and after everything he's faced. But I have a whole other video on that that you can watch on my channel that I just posted earlier today. Pierre Gasly, number three. Coming in at number two with 110 points, third in the driver standings right now, a win and six podiums, Max Verstappen, who going into the Italian Grand Prix last week had podium six times in a row, matching a personal best. Mechanical failure takes him out of that race. But I have no doubt that had a mechanical failure not happened, Verstappen would have been challenging for that win. I'm not going to, to knock him too much for one week of a mechanical failure that's out of his hands. Max Verstappen has been fantastic all year. He's one of the best drivers, if not the best in Formula One, in my opinion. There are some issues with, with the discrepancy between the number one and number two seat in Red Bull. Very well documented at this point. But Verstappen, despite a bad week in the Italian Grand Prix, has been phenomenal all season long. So he's still number two for me. I can't knock him down just yet. He would have to have a few bad weeks in a row for me to move him off that number two spot. And of course, that leaves my number one driver on my power rankings for a second straight week. Lewis Hamilton, 164 points, five wins, six podiums. And of course, he's first overall in the driver standings breaking track records left and right. And let's be honest here, if it were not for a penalty and a mess up with uh, a miscommunication with him boxing when pit lane was closed, we'd be talking about Lewis Hamilton winning yet another race, another Grand Prix. He was, he was off and ahead of everyone in the Italian Grand Prix before that happened. Luckily for us F1 fans, circumstances played out the way they did and we got to see a, a very emotional ghastly win. But let's not take it away from Lewis Hamilton. He was going to win that race if, if that didn't happen. He looked fantastic. He continuously beats Botas every single practice. He just figures out a way to get faster than him. Every single time that they go to qualifying and Botas looks like he's going to get the pole, Hamilton beats him to it. And every single race, he just gets ahead of everyone. And it looks like he, unless something like the red flag in a safety car happens and a, and a penalty, it just looks like he's on a league all by himself right now. The man's fantastic, and I think we talk about with some other drivers. Yeah, we know what Lewis Hamilton can do up front, 
But he boxed and took that penalty and dropped to the rear of that field and still raced his way up into the points, into uh, an eighth place finish. He looked fantastic doing it. Um, I, honestly, part of the, the fun I had on Sunday watching that race was watching Hamilton just crush through that field with that Mercedes. It looked really great. The guy is brilliant, and he's still number one. It's going to take a lot to knock him off of number one. It'll have to be a couple more weeks like the Italian GP before he comes off that number one. I suspect he'll probably stay there most of the season, if not all of it. So there's my top 10 for this week. Like I said, FB1 is coming up in just a few hours from my time of posting this. Cannot wait to watch a new track that has, obviously, some Formula 1 testing history in it. But we're going to get to see these drivers actually run this track and from what i understand it's a much more intense track with with a lot of world wicked wicked turns maybe not so good for overtaking but we'll see it's been a long time since we've had uh some real testing at this track cannot wait to watch it there's my top 10 if you like this video please give me a like and a subscribe like i said i put out new videos every couple days on formula one and as always thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one